Lloyd Merritt is with us on Legends Inside Scoop. He is a professional scout with the Atlanta Braves and has a long career in baseball, and not only behind him, but also now ahead of him, too, as he's looking forward to the 2014 season as a professional scout with the Braves. And uh, Lloyd is one of the people that we see regularly on the road in the South Atlantic League. You run into scouts uh, everywhere on the road, and, of course, they stop in in Lexington, too, to look over the players in the South Atlantic League. Some guys are considered for trade. Some of the big-name Major League players will sometimes go in trades that might include a South Atlantic League player. So these guys have their eyes on the on the personnel down this way. And, Lloyd, first of all, uh, thanks for taking time today. It's good to have you with us. I, uh, thank you, Keith. Always enjoyed talking with you. Tell me about the, how your scouting assignment works. Now, I, I may see you at any uh, stop along the South Atlantic League route and uh, also sometimes here uh, in Lexington as well. Tell me about how that all works. Well, I, I cover both the South Atlantic League and the Carolina League, all the teams in it. And my job is, to, like, for instance, Lexington, the Legends. If I come in, I normally want to stay with you for five days. My job is to scout all 25 players and report back to the Braves on the kids that I think are prospects, the kids that may be of, of interest to us in trades, and then also the players that basically we have no interest in. Now, you have to try to time your trips sometimes, uh, although you may, if you, if you can stay five days, you're going to see most of the guys in action. But once in a while, I'll get a question from a scout about our pitching rotation for an upcoming series so that they might get a look at a, at a certain pitcher. But of course, the scouts' plans, uh, as far as what, who can report on, can sometimes be changed by uh, a rain out or an injury or a rotation shuffle. Uh, there are a lot of things that can, uh, sort of throw a wrench into the works once in a while, aren't there? Yeah, and well, the one thing that benefits me, Keith, is the fact that I have the whole year to scout Lexington. So if I miss a uh, pitcher, I can always pick him up because I know I'm going to be watching him throughout the whole year. And that's a benefit to me compared to see some of these scouts, they have to come in and they have to hit and miss right away. So that makes it quite a difference. It makes it a lot easier on me following the team. Mm-hmm. And of course, you look at uh, players in South in the South Atlantic League, and uh, so many of them are at uh, really different stages of development. There are a lot of college guys in this league that might have played in college for three years. There are younger guys just out of high school. There are the Latin players that sometimes are even younger than the the recent high school graduates. Uh, a lot of guys at uh, different stages of life and different stages of development in their baseball careers, which uh, I would assume is all a factor in in whatever report you might make to the Braves, right? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, like this year, we had a few kids that, uh, that look like they may be really stars, but they're still young. There's so many way, places to go, uh, ways to go, and, and they're just learning. I mean, actually, it's not that far above just playing college ball because they've only been playing for two years. So uh, they're still young, and there's, a, you know, the Gallo kid at Hickory, Vincent kid, uh, uh, your boy, Montessi, uh, Almonte. There was a lot of guys that look like they're going to be good major league players but they got a long way to go talking with lloyd merritt he's a professional scout with the atlanta braves who covers the south atlantic league and stops in on uh, games involving the lexington legends fairly often during the uh, south atlantic league season and they're just talking to him about his uh, scouting job right now with the the braves but lloyd your your background in professional baseball includes some time uh, as a manager in this uh, south atlantic league and you were in the Cardinals organization in 82, 83, and 84, and it was in the South Atlantic League all three years. But I, if I'm seeing the record correctly, three different locations, right? Gastonia and uh, Macon and then Savannah. How did how did that all happen? Well, it's just the Cardinals made changes all the time. Uh, they, they were moving around trying to figure out where they wanted to go. So I stayed with them all those three years. Of course, that one year I was blessed with the with managing Vince Coleman, who right. at that time had the record for stolen bases in baseball with 145. Uh, and the thing amazing about that, Keith, he missed 29 ball games wow. that year. Mm. I did not realize he'd missed that many games. I remember the year at Savannah because that's when his name first really began to pop up on the radar, maybe outside of baseball people, when fans really began to take notice that this guy could be really something special. And, of course, that is, even to this day, is, a, is an astounding uh, total of, of stolen bases, but his speed was was truly exceptional. Even at that early stage of his career, he was he was able to steal that number of bases. It must have been it must have been exciting to watch through that summer. Oh, it was it was he uh, and he, he he just he just was so good. I mean, he was good at, at stealing bases. They pitch out and they still couldn't get him. It was it was a lot enjoyable. I, I mean, I was a little disappointed because they were bragging about Hamilton breaking his record. Well, Hamilton played a lot more games than he did. Mm-hmm. He missed that many, so it was it was enjoyable. Yes.
And then, of course, it wasn't long after that that he was in the major leagues and piling up the big uh, stolen base totals at that time, too. And, of course, that's kind of a, a phase of the game that's uh, been put aside here now with the new new and smaller parks and uh, more emphasis on power. And we'd, with uh, Billy Hamilton coming on, maybe we'll, we'll see something like that again. But it's it's been a while since a, a player like a Vince Coleman has come along. Well, and, and if you'll realize, that even, and it goes into scouting now, Keith, uh, it used to be you scouted the shortstop all you could if you just could feel that was all, but not anymore. Almost every position player now, if they're interested, can, does he have power and can he hit? Uh, it's changed. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that you'd managed a year in Savannah, and of course when we go to Savannah for the Legends to play the Savannah Sand Nets, we go to the same ballpark, and it was a fairly old ballpark uh, when you managed there in 1984 as well. That one uh, has uh, has aged, and uh, I don't know whether the players and the managers care for it or not. It's kind of a nice place to visit, but uh, what are your recollections of the Savannah oh, ballpark? Oh, uh, Sand Nets, <laughs> they'll drive you crazy. They yes. did, They were really bad and again this year. I, I, that, that was really something. One of the one of the ballparks that I guess will really tell my age is Hagerstown. Mm-hmm. That's the same ballpark that I pitched in in 1954. <laughs> yep. That's the same <laughs> one. And, Savannah, and, Savannah is a good town, but the Nats will drive you crazy there. And that, and that ballpark's improved. They put a lot of money into it since I was managing there. And at that time, they had a short left field fence, and, uh, they, and whenever it rained, it just automatically del- uh, flooded the whole field. So. They've done a lot there and improved that field. One of the challenges for a minor league manager, of course, in terms of game management, your mission is uh, quite a bit different than, than what the big league manager uh, is, is trying to do because uh, he's there to, to win only. You're there to develop players, and a lot of times uh, the, what the manager does at the minor league level is, is dictated from uh, the major league operation, and, and you have to kind of balance that in, in terms of being in charge of the game. Uh, is, is that Pretty much how it was when you were managing, or, or how did things work at that time? Oh, no, no doubt about it, Keith. I, I mean, I had a, many situations where probably I may have been able to win the ball game, but I maybe have had a pitcher in there that we were wanting to maybe toughen up and leave him in there and see how he can do when we went ahead. No, yeah, there's there's a lot of difference in what you're managing down in the minor leagues compared to when they could get up to the big leagues. So all you're doing down there to see can they have it. That's to put it this way: we can they bite the bullet? That, mm-hmm. That's the expression I always use. And that is all part of the learning experience, isn't it? Because obviously you're trying to teach some some baseball skills as they move up, but just being able to handle the professional baseball workload uh, for our guys at this level, they're usually playing their first 140 game season. That in itself is a big challenge, and you as the manager kind of have to monitor their progress there and make sure they're handling all of that. In addition to improving on the field. Oh, yes. And, and also, see, the other thing great about for me is if I see that kid at the beginning of the year and then I see him at the end of the year, uh, to me, I want to see has he, has he developed, has he worked hard, uh, has his attitude improved. And that, that's all, and that's a very important part because that's the learning process at that age. Mm-hmm. And, and if you see a guy trending in the, the wrong direction, if he started fast and is uh, tailing off toward the end of the year, Sometimes that can mean that the the other teams have sort of found a hole in the swing, you might say. And and for some guys, uh, they, it's a weakness that maybe they never overcome. Maybe it's the thing that uh, takes them on out of baseball. It does happen with a lot of guys. Well, I mean, that's actually a situation with the kid that led the home run, Joey Gallo. Mm-hmm. There's a big concern about is he going to be able to handle it when he gets up higher, be able to handle the Can he adapt and can he make the changes that will make him a, a star in the major? big leagues, uh, and that, that's the area that you look for. Uh, th- did he work at it, and did he improve? I, ha- I have situations. I had one this year with a kid that I really liked. I thought he was really good. And then about halfway through the year, I talked to the hitting coach and found out that this kid seems to think that he's a lot better than anybody else. Well, that's a concern of mine, and that's a concern for them, too. Talking with Lloyd Merritt, he's a professional scout with the Atlanta Braves and covers the uh, South Atlantic League and talked a little bit about the uh, scouting and of players uh, at this age and uh, of course when a guy uh, finishes strong then that looks like he is uh, he is ready for the next step and uh, that's certainly what you want to see at, at this stage of uh, development uh, when you uh, compile your reports and report back to the Braves you mentioned uh, talking about their their attitude their approach uh, some guys like to, some scouts like to sit in on batting practice, just see how a guy approaches his work uh, before the game starts. Is that something that's uh, important for you in your routine? 
I, I do if I do if I have a situation where maybe he had a tough time at the plate the night before. I want to see how what he does he do the next day to make an adjustment. I, I mean, I guess I was blessed. I only I played the pitch one year in the major leagues with the St. Louis Cardinals, but I happened to be with Stan Musial, and and that was the greatest. That was a great example of good batting practice. If Musial got if they got Musial out the night before. And that's all he wanted the next day. If there was curveballs, so many curveballs. There was fastball, and that's what I look for. Yeah, do they when they're taking batting practice? Is it not trying to hit home runs? Is it trying to, to improve himself? Well, Lloyd, that was the question I was going to specifically ask you. You were with the St. Louis Cardinals in 1957 for the entire season, and that was the year I believe that Musial won the last of his seven National League batting titles. And I think you'd grown up in the St. Louis area. That must have been a, a, a doubly good experience, not only to see the great uh, future Hall of Famer in action, but also a guy that you, you must have followed uh, when you were growing up. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing like that's probably one of my great thrills in life because I, I, I actually lived right close to the ballpark, the old sportsman's park. And I never dreamt that I would be end up pitching in the big leagues for the Cardinals, but uh, I did. And then, of course, the, the most important thing was being able to play with a guy like Stan Musial. I met that famous, they call him Stan the Man, and I made a comment. He was not only Stan the Man on the field, but he was Stan the Man off the field. He was a, it was a pleasure to be with him. Well, your opinion on him, uh, that, that keeps it unanimous as far as opinions I've heard about Stan Musial is that uh, he was a, a superstar, uh, someone that you could uh, uh, look up to on the field and then also uh, meet as a person and not feel at all disappointed about the way he conducted himself. That was certainly his reputation uh, throughout the years and the many, many years that he lived uh, after his retirement. Oh, he was he, he was the light, Keith. I mean, if he, if he was alive right now and you walk, he walked up to you and you'd say, hi, Stan, and then he hey, Stan, do something. He'd pull out that harmonica and play the Wabash Canning Ball. <laughs> that, that was him. He was, a, he was just a normal, down-this-earth type of guy. He was a wonderful person. Well, I'm sure it was a great uh, part of your, your baseball experience. We appreciate you sharing it with us uh, today. Lloyd Merritt, a professional scout with the Atlanta Braves, a long career in professional baseball. And, uh, Lloyd, it's really great news to hear that you'll be uh, around the South Atlantic League again in, in 2014. We wish you well, and uh, thanks for taking time at this time of the year when I know it's uh, family time for baseball people and uh, then back on the road again before too much longer. Well, thank you, Keith. I always enjoyed talking with you here. You're always helpful. You are helpful for me. Thank you so much, and you have a good holiday.